Hello and welcome to the Ingerati studio live at the European Utility Week in Barcelona. I'm Sofia and I'm joined by Dennis Maya. He's the CEO of Choice Holding. How are you, Dennis? Very good, and you? I'm really, really good. Thank you for taking the time uh, for this interview. So uh, let's start. So you describe yourself as the James Bond uh, <laughs> of the revenue insurance. I actually love this uh, reference. <laughs> So let's pretend that James Bond uh, had a mission against European electricity thief. Uh, what type of case would he be cover uncovering? Sorry. Yeah. So that's a, that's a very nice uh, say. Uh, I, I think that the big challenge is that the the fraud, the energy theft and fraud, is becoming more and more sophisticated. And so it's not something that I will just bypass a meter. No, it's it's very simple. It's unbelievable the ways and the sophistication the customers could do for that. They could temper a meter in tens, maybe hundreds of ways, different ways. And how you detect that? And they tell you, some commercial customers, they hire engineers, mm -hmm. they hire lawyers to come up with a new idea how to make a fraud and avoid to be caught. So that's why we work on, on these like uh, espionage or information agency style because we get all the information from the utilities, from the corporate system, external data and applying the, let's say, the best of breed in terms of machine learning algorithms, we can come up with the best predictions and detect this type of of activities uh, before of course they happen well the, in fact they happen and we we detect they are occurring and uh, the utilities send people to the fields mm -hmm. to check about okay if there is or not a fraud that's the only way yeah so you use the intelligence again like intelligence agents mm -hmm. to to see the activities and okay that's something suspicious here and to send someone there Understood. that's that's the way operational way you do that to uncover the case. Understood. So they're becoming more sophisticated and clever, but we are as well. So. Yeah, we, we, we must to, to, to be uh, as much as possible clever than them, applying the best technology that exists in artificial intelligence, the answer for that. Understood. So um, how are European utilities managing this problem? Well, all utilities, yeah, in some sense, are doing something. Mm. But the problem is, what is the level of maturity they are doing? Because, again, it's a very complex topic. The other sides could be very, very sophisticated. And because it's a myth, thinking that uh, losses are related to poor people. Uh, okay, so if you have slums, if you have poor communities, so the problem is there, so it's easy to tackle. No, 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 Not it's true. the opposite. It's a myth. We have statistics, for example, that uh, less than 40% of the losses are in poor communities. And so 6% or that. more are in people that can afford, that they really can pay for that, and inclusive they are doing sophisticated methods to avoid paying the, the utilities. So that's, that's why you need to increase the level of maturity. So our utilities are doing only uh, street procedures, looking around and see uh, if there is any case. There are others that are doing more computational efforts in terms of uh, carries or statistics. And are others that are one step further, implement real analytics tools and the best of a bit in terms of artificial intelligence. So I see all the types, in deep, depends on country by country, utility by utility, but uh, every utility is doing something. Uh, the, the question is, what is the level of maturity of each one? Understood. So, um, with Choice Holding, are you able to help gas and water utilities as well? Yes, for sure. The business process is exactly the same, and the way to make a fraud is exactly the same. Okay. So, you can do a meter tampering in the same way in electricity, water or gas uh, meter. It doesn't matter the type of meter and the benefits from the customer is the same. Of course. So it's very similar. So our solution works for the three segments in the same way. For sure, you see different level of losses, uh, depends on the sector. Uh, the, the lowest level in gas, but it's the really still energy losses there in gas sector. Okay. Uh, we, we've been in talking with several customers around Europe 
and some have 2%, 3% or up to 4%, but it still amounts a big amount of energy and money involved in this enterprise. And the regulators are pushing more and more to reduce that. On the electricity side, it's a big myriad of, uh, of options. You have uh, very low losses in some countries, some utilities, but in others you can face 15%, 20% of losses. So we have all this range. And the water, that's the worst segment, ah. yeah. Water is really lag compared to gas and electricity. They still need to make a lot of investments. You have two types of, uh, of losses in water. One that is what we call the, the water leakage. That's a problem, the pipeline, so we have the, the leakage. And the other is the non-technical losses that could be a meter temporary fraud or other type of losses. So, but in general, both are big. Yeah, and uh, so water companies are that really need to make an improvement in, in this sector. Well, nonetheless, electricity and gas as well, but in different levels. In different levels. Yeah. And, uh, and the water, in my opinion, is, is something that we need to bring this conscience because when you look to gas and mainly electricity, we talk a lot of energy efficiency, CO2 uh, emission curve. And so you have all these frameworks working to bring more efficient and reduce the losses. But when you're talking about water, no. That's something we need to, to, to start talking about more. more because it's a limited resource as well. Of course. And uh, so in my opinion, it's urgent that we need to do something in this sector uh, on, on a different pace. On a different pace, perfect. So uh, why, are we, why aren't we seeing a pan-utility or pan-European action against it? Well, until now, I haven't seen a pan or, or or policy. Uh, again, there are some policies, there are pan uh, pan-European, more in energy efficiency, okay. but not specifically in non-technical losses. Okay. Yeah. That would be a very good topic to bring, to have, a, a, let's say, European policy for that, uh, because in general, what you see is the regulators, country by country, has their own policy. So in some countries, we have the regulator pushing very hard to reduce the losses, but in others, um, they are not so, so strong in that way. And they can tell you, what is the country that is doing best? Is the country with 5% losses or 15% losses? Mm -hmm. It depends on the regulator. Exactly. Yeah, so maybe if the regulator in the country with 50% losses say, okay, utilities, you have been compensating the tariff of the 15% losses. So no one cares to reduce it and us, citizens, we are paying for the, the losses. So other regulator in the country, 5% losses could say, no, 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 5% is not acceptable. So let's reduce for 4% for 3% in five year perspective, for example. So I think it would be very, very worth for Europe to have a common policy to, that all regulators could follow the guidance the same. and have a same framework to reduce the losses. There are in different levels, depends mm -hmm. on the country, but we are following a common policy and guidance. That would be very important for Europe, in my opinion. Understood. So, um, how are technology providers, uh, such a uh, choice holding, uh, staying one step ahead of Frodester? Yeah, uh, good question. We're talking a, a lot about how sophisticated they are and how sophisticated we could be. Yeah, again, we are like the information angels mm -hmm. for that. And, uh, or, or remember the James Bond say, so what we do? First, information is everything. We need information. That's the most important asset that utility has. It's not a substation, you know, a transformer or a meter. The best asset they have is information. And with this information, if you have the most advanced technology in artificial intelligence, we work with algorithms and machine learning. Mm -hmm. So it means we learn with the historical data from the systems. So when we learn, we can detect patterns. And patterns say that, okay, did something strange. And for every pattern and every customer, you can have a probability, you can predict. So what our software does is they say, okay, Dennis has 27% uh, probability to have a, a non technical colossus. And uh, maybe my colleague, my neighbor has uh, 20% or 15 or zero, whatever. So we do this customer by customer. Okay. And, and beyond that, we say, what we should expect if you find the fraud there? 
Yeah, what is the value? Because it's very easy to find fraud. No, our objective, the goal is not only find fraud, but uh, the biggest amount of energy as possible, water as possible. Because on the other hand, the resource, the organizational and financial resource for the utilities are also limited. Mm -hmm. So we are talking about optimization. So with this resource, what we can do best? So you predict the probabilities, but at the same time, what is the value? And with this, you can maximize the amount of energy or water you can, you can recover. How can cope with the, the sophistication on the other side, beyond the artificial intelligence machine learning, is that our systems are also based in, in the concept of evolutionary system. So that's interesting because when it's, it's, it's a very dynamic evolutionary system. When you detect a fraud, you know what happens? The other customers, they are doing the same type of frauds. They notice that, oh, the utility caught our uh, neighbor or whatever, and uh, we need to change the type of fraud we're doing. So they adapt. So what do you have to do? You have to adapt against their adaptation. Yeah. Always being. Yeah, that's the only way you can be uh, ahead of them. So the algorithms are prepared for that. So our software learns every day. So every day we are recalibrating probabilities. We are recalculating a lot of patterns. And that's the way you can use, again, the best of technology to provide you a benefit. With a benefit. So it's a competition, yeah. basically, between no, the producer and you. It's an endless game, yeah, game, yeah. and uh, it's uh, like a mouse and cat game, but uh, uh, it's the same again. I, I really love the analogy of the intelligence agents, mm -hmm. yeah, because when you have a, a, an end on, on intelligence agents, never. No. Yeah? So if you are fighting against terrorism, it never have an end. So we want to do the best to avoid things to happen, to reduce, but to never have an end. So the same thing is for fraud, because it's in the, the human nature to try to get a benefit. So some individuals try, will try to do that ever. And it depends of the technology. Yeah, if you think, oh, but you have a new technology for smart meters. Okay, smart meters can uh, get you more data but can't prevent that you do a meter temper or a bypass. Okay. Yeah? So, and, and by the way, when you have smart meters, maybe you can have more ways to, so to do new type of frauds that you couldn't do before. Do before, so could not. Yeah? And so that's, that's a very important way to think. It's an endless game. And that's why we, what we implement in our customers is an intelligence center. So the technology is the pillar for that. But you need really to create your own intelligence agents inside the utilities mm. with your team, with our support, with our technology. But that's the best way to be in this endless game, but head to head. Okay. Yeah. Understood. So we have time for a last question. Um, what type of results uh, for ven uh, revenue collection are achievable by using data approach? Okay. So, uh, interesting point. So, uh, let's separate in, in, in two points. One is what type of uh, case or figures we can share in terms of uh, fraud detection and energy recovery, not this collection. Because okay. one thing is detect the problem. You can invoice the customers, apply fines, whatever. But other thing is collect the money. So, uh, we have case that one single utility, we added more than $40 million as additional EBITDA for them per year, just using this concept. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, without increasing any figure in terms of operational expenses. So same amount of field inspections, the same team just implemented an intelligence center with our technology, you can boost $40 million your EBITDA. It's mm. just to give you a perspective, it was an increase of 11% of the utilities EBITDA in that year. So definitely that's something that interests the CFO and CEO of the company. And uh, on the other hand, on collection, we, we can apply the same technology to understand the payment behavior and the payment propensity. And you can also prioritize your collection strategies mm -hmm. to try to, to gather as maximum you can from these customers. So we have different strategies, but uh, what should I apply for each customer? 
It's the same that I say to the to to uh, a patient. Okay, you have pneumonia, and uh, you have this this flu uh, medicine, or the otherwise you have someone with flu and apply antibiotic for the for the flu. No, you need to understand customer by customer what is the right medicine to apply to each one. So what is the right collection strategy for each one? We can help on that as well. So we can detect the fraud, you can increase the invoice, the revenue, on the other hand, you can get a, a more money increase in the collection side. Yeah, that's the way we, we work. And just to give you another figure, if you sum up our customers, we save more than $1 billion for our customers using our technology and implement this concept intelligence center. Okay, brilliant. Uh, and I think it's a great place to bring this uh, interview to an end. Thank you very much, Dennis, for taking the time to speak to us. It was lovely, pleasure. Remember that you can watch all the uh, European Utility Week interviews on our Ingerati YouTube channel. Goodbye.